everybody. Welcome to Fresh Fire Friday. So glad to have you uh, join in with us this morning. Uh, pray that your morning is starting out great. Uh, it is it is good to see you uh, and to be with you. Ooh, excuse me, just a minute. Okay. All right. It is good to see you and to uh, be with you this morning. Blessings to everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us uh, this morning. Um, uh, I pray that your day starts out just just wonderful for you. I pray uh, that you have a great day and that uh, everything uh, works together for your good and works out in your favor today. Uh, blessings to you and your family. Uh, I pray that after Wednesday night that um, God bless you in ways that, um, that, that you were expecting for God to come through for you. I know that he did for me. Um, there was this one project that I was working on, and I told y'all that God was going to be performing miracles. Uh, there was one project that I was working on because um, uh, I am going to, I mean, I am in the, in the process of starting a, uh, a new business. And so I was um, working on some stuff, and there was a, this software that I just really, uh, I did I, I couldn't, good morning, good morning, Kiki, I couldn't figure out this software. And um, in that night, um, later on that night, God, um allowed me to be able to figure out the uh, software and to get everything uh, straightened out with the software because it's important um, that I know how to do that. And not only that, not only did God do that for me, uh, but he also, um, one of the uh, cameras that I needed, um, it, it just so happened to be on sale for Prime Day. So I was able to get uh, one of the uh, cameras that I needed also. And so uh, I, I just thank God for that. I, I pray that God uh, did perform some miracles in your life. I pray uh, that God will continue to perform miracles in your life. And I pray that you will continue to get all the things uh, from life that uh, you so uh, desired, so desired. Uh, I, I, I'm excited about um, my wife and I having date night tonight. It's been a while, you know, and, uh, and, and, and that, that we've had our date night. And so I'm so excited about date night tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm, I can't wait until we uh, get to go out tonight and enjoy our date. Just want my wife to know how much I love her and how much I appreciate her. Uh, and, 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 and just, you know, just, 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 just you guys, it's, it's, it's just a time where we should, um, we should just start showing uh, each other appreciation and all of that kind, you know, and all of that and kindness and all of those things that go along with, with just being good humans, just being good humans. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's get into uh, this lesson today. Uh, I don't have long and I am not going to trouble us long. Y'all don't trouble me long and I won't trouble y'all long. So let's 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 start thinking about these things. Let's start thinking about these things. Now, when we when you look around at your life right now, uh, I got a question for you. Is your life in chaos? I mean, like right now, is your life in chaos? Is your life chaotic? Or are things in your life not the way you want them to be? Are you looking at, are you, are, it, it's, it's, it, when you, when you look around at your life right now, um, like say for instance, like when you look at your, let's use your car for, for example, uh, because you know, most people will have like these junky cars and by junky, I mean, it, <clears throat> there's stuff everywhere. I'm not talking about how clean it is on the outside <clears throat> or anything like that. I'm talking about inside. Is there stuff all over the place? You know, if you open up your trunk, is your trunk, you know, is it junky? Is there stuff all over your trunk? Is there stuff everywhere in your car? You understand that as long as your car is that way, that you, you know, that, that, that is an indication of your life is just out of order. Because when you just get in there, you just throw stuff everywhere. Um, that that means that 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 stuff that you're throwing around is not important to you, and you just want to get rid of it. But when it becomes important and you need it, you won't be able to find it, or it'll be more difficult for you to find. This is a lesson, and y'all stick with me today. This is something I learned when I was in the military. I learned this lesson when I was in the military. If you put everything back where it belongs, when you need it, it won't be hard to find. So then when we look at order in our life, order is just the, the correct arrangement of things in your life. And, and so many times we allow 
We allow everything that, that's going on to come at us all at one time. And so then we don't correctly arrange stuff so that when we need stuff, it's not available to us. We, we can't find it. And, and when you can't find something when you need it, it becomes frustrating. And here's the thing that I learned that I learned when I was in the military about about correct order and arranging things in your life correctly was that, you know, your life and other people's lives will depend on you being able to put your hands on the things that you need to put your hands on. Say, for instance, like, the, you know, when we did it back then, it was just training. But when you go to war, it's for real. It's for real. And you don't have time to be looking when people are firing, firing live bullets at you. You don't have time to be looking around for stuff, trying to find stuff. What, what does the word of God say? Put on the whole armor of God so that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And, and, I, and I think sometimes that we're not we're not putting on the whole armor. We're not correctly uh, um, putting on the things that we need in order that we may be able to fight. And, I, and I'm afraid we're going into to these fights in these battles that we're going into. And we're not prepared because we don't have on the whole armor of God. We don't have everything that we need to have in, the, in order for us to be victorious in these fights. And, and we're losing too many battles. Now, we're going to win the war, but if you keep losing all these battles along the way, when you, when you, when you eventually win the war, you're going to be so tired and so bruised and so wounded until it's not going to even seem like, you know, that, that is even worth it. And I'm telling you right now, you got to correctly arrange things in your life. Let me help y'all out. I, I say this, um, not only to you am I saying this, but I say this to myself, um, all the time that, 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 you know, we gotta, we gotta get things, we gotta put things, uh, in their proper place and where they belong. Because, you know, it, it, think about your friends. Think about the people that you call friends. And a whole lot of times we think that the people that, that we call, we'll, we'll call people friends and we put them in, on levels where they don't belong. And then when stuff happens, We'll go where I thought that they were my friend. Will you never, they could be your friend, but, but if you think about, any of y'all have to do that little, that little experiment when you were in school, we had to arrange the planets. Anybody, anybody had to do that? Well, you had to arrange the plant, planets, you had to put them in there, in their celestial order. You know, this planet was here, was here and that planet was there. You know, Jupiter, Earth, Mars, you had to put all of them. You need to start thinking about your friends that way. Um, you need to make sure you understand that that people that get with the people that come within your inner circle, then, then that's that that's, that happens because you over time because you trust them and you know them. You spiritually discern who they are. You don't just you know meet somebody today and then they're a part of your innermost circle. You're setting yourself up for hurt. Because you won't, you won't arrange things. You won't, there's no orderly arrangement. There's this, there's chaos and you're inviting more people. And the more people you invite into your inner circle who have not been tried, tested and gone through some stuff with you, uh, th then you, you know, you can't, when you bring those people in, you can't trust, you put those people in a place where they shouldn't be and you allow, and you trust them with stuff that you shouldn't be trusting them with. And you're setting yourself up for failure. And I'm telling you right now, we have to, everything in our life desires or, or needs order. We need order. When the Lord looked at, when the Lord looked at, looked at the planet, he said it was, it was dark, dark and it was void. And then there, here came light. And, and what light did was light created order. Light created order. When it comes to the things of God in our lives, We've got to we've got to orderly arrange the things that God wants us to arrange so that we can maximize our lives so that you can maximize your life. You can maximize everything in your life. Let, let me let me help you out with something. And, and if I'm all over the board, y'all just forgive me this morning. I'm just all over the board. Uh, my thoughts are running rampant this morning. So so let me help you out with something. You know, it's possible to believe in marriage. It's possible to believe in marriage and have faith in your marriage and still be unfaithful. Did y'all did y'all did y'all know that? So what I'm telling you is that it's possible 
to believe in faith and to still be unfaithful to God. It's possible to say, you know, it, it's possible because, you know, when you say I have faith, those are just words. To be faithful is to put those words into action. And, then, and, and, and we run around nowadays and we say we believe in God. Think about this right here. And I want y'all to think about this on so many levels, so many levels. If they're in, in this, I, I've heard so many people use this as an example. I've used it myself. It is possible. It, listen, if, if, a, if a machine, if, a, if you go to a drink machine and it's out of order, then, 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 then would you still put your money into it? Would you still invest in it? And, 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 and I want you to think about this in your life. When your life is out of order, when it's when it's when there is no when there is no arrangement, there is no orderly arrangement in your life. You're asking God to come and pour His sources blessings into your life, and there's no order in your life. You'll do it just like you'll do, like I said earlier, with that stuff in your car. God will bless you. You'll just throw it somewhere. Just put it. Just throw it over there to the side somewhere, as though it's not important. And these things are going to be these things are important to you. They're important to you. If you, if God gave you, if God blessed you with your power bill money and you spent that money on something else because something else grabbed your attention and you didn't have any order in your life and you didn't arrange this stuff in order, your power bill is going to come due and you're not going to have what you need to pay it and it's not going to be God's fault. It's going to be the fact that you were out of order in your spending and you spent money that you should not have spent. And when you needed it, you didn't have it because watch this. You're, 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 you're out of order. You know, you're, you're financially out of order and, and you need to make sure that everything is arranged orderly. That's what we call a budget. A budget is just an orderly arrangement of your finances. And, and you need to have some order because if you don't have order, then things get out of control. I, I'm trying to bless us today. And we got to learn that, that, that when God gives us stuff, we got to be faithful over this stuff. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta orderly arrange stuff and you've got to be faithful over the stuff that God has given you. And you got to be able to, when, when to, the, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. So if God has given you much, then God is going to require much. And are you going to be able to give God the things that he's requiring of you? Because listen, this was supposed to be my lesson for this morning. I was supposed to be talking about stewardship. And I don't even know how I got on what I was talking about. But but being a good steward, a good steward must be found faithful. And a steward is somebody who only manages somebody else's stuff. Y'all got it. Like the children that God gave you. He only you have to be a good steward over those. God God only loaned those children to you. He gave them he gave them to you for a little while because you have something that God wanted you to put in them. And then when when time is over, God is going to God is going to ask you, you know, did you do what I told you to do? Were you a good steward? Everything that you have in your life is because God gave it to you. And God is going to God is going to God is requiring that you are a good steward over the stuff that he gave you. And will you be found faithful over the stuff that God gave you? No matter what it is, your talents, your gifts, your abilities, God requires that you be a good steward over the stuff that he gave you. And you're going to have to give an account to God for the stuff that he gave you and how you, you use what God gave you. You're going to give an account to God for that. So everything that God gave you, you're going to have to give it an account for it. And or will you be found a, as a good steward? Or will you be found as an unfaithful steward? Here's a key to gaining much in the kingdom of God. Be faithful over the little bit that he gave you. I know, <clears throat> I know this seems like this is a terribly difficult thing, but it really isn't. How faithful over you, how faithful are you over the stuff that God has already given you? How, 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 how are you using what God has already given you? I know you want more and I know you've been crying out, Lord, give me more, but you've not been, if you've not been faithful over what God has given you, why would he give you more? Why would anybody give somebody more 
who is when when somebody has proven that they have been unfaithful. You're going on your job today. <clears throat> and I want y'all to think about this. You're going on your job today. And a lot of us go on our jobs and we think we as a believer, we, we have this attitude. I'm going to work for the man. You're going to work for the Lord. Everything you do, you're doing it as unto the Lord. And God is God is making note of everything that we do. He's making note of everything that we do. And so if God is making note of what you're doing, listen, if you get promoted on your job, it didn't come from your boss. It came from God. And we got to start doing things as unto the Lord. We, You got to prove to God that you're faithful with everything. That, that, listen, your ability to do that job, that's talent and ability that God gave you. That's, that's not something that your employer gave you. That came from God. And you're going to have to give an account to God about how you use what he gave you. And so I want you to start thinking about these things differently. You know, you're working for God. I'm, I'm doing this job for the Lord. Now, now, at the end of the day, is God satisfied with the work that you did? Because that's who you have to satisfy. And God's standards, believe it or not, God's standards are even higher than the people that you're working for. Because you're a child of God and God is saying, you're showing me off. And so what I'm trying to get us to understand is that we have to start being faithful. We have to start, listen, you need, you need, if your life is chaotic, you, you need some order in your life. You, you're at, at some point, you're going to have to just stop. You're just going to have to just stop. You, it, as a matter of fact, this is what I like to say. You're going to have to stop. You're going to have to shut it down for a minute. And then you're going to have to take inventory. And then you're going to have to figure out where everything goes and where everybody goes. And when you do this and when you when you create order in your life, every, in every area where you create order, you eliminate chaos. I'm going to say that again. In every area in your life where you create order, you eliminate chaos. In every area where there's order, you're eliminating chaos and you got to stop with, you know, we got to stop with all these chaotic lifestyles we're using. You got to create order. You're going to have to stop. You're going to take inventory of your life. Take stock, arrange everything where everything should be arranged so that then you would be able to enjoy the life that God has given you. The reason what you can't do everything all at once. Uh, I read this book a long time ago. I read this book. I forgot. Um, I forgot the author's names of this book, but it was like um, men are like waffles. Women are like spaghetti. And it was really thinking about how it was really talking about how men and women relate to each other and trying. And, and the authors were, were trying to help us to understand uh, how men and women relate and how, you know, if you understand how someone relates to you, it it. It, it, it enables you to have a better relationship with that person. Men are like waffles. We think of one thing at a time. Think about a waffle with those squares. We're in one place at a time. And, and it was it, and, and it was talking about women. If you throw too much at a man when he's in that square, if you throw too much at him, then, then you create chaos in his life because you're confusing him. Because we can only really concentrate on one thing at a time. I know. I listen. Did, did y'all get that? I, I want y'all women to get that. That are in a relationship uh, with a man that that you know you married on your relationship, and, and when you throw a lot of stuff at a man, it confuses him and it creates chaos in his life. And so the, he will never. He won't. <clears throat> he'll have problems doing one thing well, because he's trying to do everything, and then he'll always forget something. If, if if I'm working on a project, I have to, I'm in that one project. If there's other stuff, then I'm going to have to stop doing this. These are the squares. I have to stop doing this and I have to go over here and move to this square. But I'm going to have to completely stop doing that other thing. Because if I don't, it's going to create chaos and confusion. Women are like spaghetti. Everything in their lives is connected. Like a plate of spaghetti. You don't know where the, where the spaghetti noodles, noodles started and you don't know where it ended. And there's just a whole lot of them. 
and everything is connected. Everything is connected for a woman. Uh, th there is this example <clears throat> that I like to use, uh, and y'all women help me out. If, if there's this piece of pie <clears throat> in the refrigerator and a woman has had, uh, she went to work and it was a, it, it was, it was one, it was just one of them days. And we all have one of them, it was just one of them challenging days. And while she was there in her mind, in her mind, what she was going to do, she's going to get off work, you know, go home, take a nice long hot bath, um, you know, just settle down in the bed, get that pie and eat that pie. Well, that pie has emotions attached to it. That that pie means something to that woman. The man comes along, sees the pie in the refrigerator. He just eats the pie. He grabs the pie. He just eats it. Don't think about it. Ain't no emotions attached to it. Just wanted a piece of pie. Woman comes home. That pie is gone. Oh, my God. There's hell to pay. Why? You ate that pie, and that pie was emotional. She might break down and start crying. <clears throat> and here is you, baby. I go out and buy your whole pie. You, what we, the point that we miss is that piece of pie has some emotions attached to it. That was a part of her orderly day, and we messed up her order and created chaos. Did y'all get it? A man <clears throat> for us, chaos was created when you added something to our square. For a woman, we created chaos when something she was emotionally attached to, we took it away from her. We can't replace that because it's not just replacing the pie, it's replacing the emotions. I hope we understand that. And that's order for her. And, and what we got to do is when, when, when it comes to God, we, we, we have heard so many times and we've even said it, God is a God of order. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. You've heard this so many times. God is a God of order. So in order for us to relate to God, we have to become a people of order. Come on, somebody. In order for us to relate to God, then we have to become a people of order. Because if we don't, if we don't understand that God is a God of order, and then, then we try and relate to God with chaos, then what happens is, is that God, God, basically we will, we will cause God to stand there, to just stand there and wait. Because if you're going to, if, if order relates to order, then that means that I must now, I must now bring my life into order according to God's order. Come on. So if order is going to relate to order, then that means that if God is God and he changes not, that means that I have to be the one that changes in order that I might be able to relate to God in a more efficient manner so that I may receive from God the things that are necessary for me to maximize my life. Come on. I, I must that there must be order in, in, in even in even in husband and wife relationships. There has to be order. And when y'all when you get to a place where you understand the person that you're married to, then the relationships get better. The relationship gets better because then you understand the order that, that's in that particular relationship. You understand y'all's order and y'all start moving together. Did, did y'all get y'all start moving together? Or, or as we say, you start you start vibing together because you understand one another. You start vibing together because you understand one another. And when you understand one another, the relationship gets better. When you're vibing together, so it is with God, with God, when we're vibing together, when we're moving together, the relationship is better. Order relates to order. Order relates to order. Chaos relates to chaos. If your life is chaotic, you're only going to draw more chaos into your life. And, and we got to we 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 got to we got to get to a place to where we understand how this thing works. And when you understand how it works and you every time there's order, it eliminates chaos. When you understand this, if you're if your finances are chaotic, get on a budget. It will eliminate all of the chaos. It will eliminate the stressors in your life. It will eliminate most of the, your finances. It will eliminate most of the stuff 
<clears throat> matter of fact, I, I'm 95% of the stuff will be eliminated. And you'll create order in your life. And if you can stay on that budget, you'll realize that my finances, they were just chaotic. And, and when I create an order, I'm, I'm able to do things and able to see things a whole lot better. I'm able to do things and see things a whole lot better. When you create order, and that's what we've got to do. We've got to become a people of order. You've got to start managing what God has given you better, and you've got to create some order in your life. And, and especially, listen, if you're, in a, if, if you're in any kind of relationship, the most important thing that you do is learn how to relate to the per relationship, to relate. To relate. you got to learn how to relate to the person you're in relationship with. And if you're going to be in a relationship with God, you got to learn how to relate to God. Think about this. He already knows how to relate to us. We have to learn how to relate to him. I, I know, I know, I know. Watch this. And I'm about to mess with your theology. I'm about to mess with your theology. Isn't theology the study of God? Come on, somebody. I, I need a scholar to help me with this. I, I'm looking. I, I've been looking in the comments, but I'm looking now. In theology... The study of God, what man thinks about God. Theology is what man thinks about God. It, this is my simple way of relating to this. But the Bible is what God knows about man. Okay, okay, come on, come on, come on. Theology is what man thinks about God. The Bible is what God knows about man. And so if God knows you, he created you. Wouldn't you think that that if, if the wouldn't you think that the one who created me would know what he created me to do? And so I need to get to know him. Okay, let me use this and then I'm about to get off the line. I'm about to get off the line. A toaster will work as a doorstop. Did y'all get that? I could put my toaster in my door to jam my door to keep it open. It will work as a doorstop. But the the, the creator, the one who created it. The one who created the toaster, the manual that he gave me for my toaster has nothing to do with the toaster being a doorstop. There's nothing in the manual that, that would tell me that he created this toaster to be a doorstop. If I never read the owner's manual, I would never be able to realize and, and experience the full function of my toaster. If, 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 if all I know it to be is a doorstop, I will abuse that toaster for his entire life and it would never be able to function the way that it with the way that it was created to function. And if I don't read the owner's manual, I I may just, you know, pop some toaster there, but I don't know. I may not know that it has this other function that does this to a bagel or this other function that does this or this other function that does that. But when I read the owner's manual, when I read when I read the words that the one that created the thing, when I read the words that, that he has put down, that when I read his words, and when I see what he created it to do, I could better use it. Come on, think about your own life. When you, when you, when you study the word and you realize what God has created you to do, you can live a better life, better than what you live in. You can live a better life when you simply understand and, and, and get the knowledge of, from the one who created you. Come on, you got to read the owner's manual. You got to read the owner's manual. You, you got to understand everything that God has created you to do. He has written it down in his word. And all he's saying is that, you know, get to know me, relate to me. Come on, when you, and, and I'm and I, I, I really... Man, this this is a word. This is a word for right now. This is a word for right now. I need for y'all to get this. You gotta you gotta create some order in your life. You got. I need for I need for y'all to stop. I need for you to stop. I need for I need for you to shut it down, and I need for you to take inventory. When I was a warehouse manager, when we took inventory, we shut down the whole warehouse. We would shut it down. We we didn't with with nothing going out, with nothing coming in. We had to shut down the warehouse so that we would know what we had in the warehouse. We there was there, and sometimes you'll find something that was in a place where it shouldn't be, 
and, and then the count was off. You know, you might think, well, I only have I only have nine of these when you actually have ten. One is in the wrong space. And you have more than you need, and you don't need any more. You just need to take what you have and put it in the right spot. Man, that was just a prophetic word for somebody right there. You don't you don't need any more. You just need to inventory what you have and make sure everything is correctly arranged. You are here trying to get more of something that you already have. You're just not using it. It's just not in the right place. And order is simply putting everything in its correct place. So shut it down. Take inventory. Put everything where it belongs. Get some order in your life. Order relates to order. And the more order you put in your life, the more you're going to be able to relate to God and the more you're going to be able to maximize your life. It is my desire. It is my desire. Always been my desire. And really, really, and really, really, and truly, I want y'all to think about this right here. I want you to think about this. I, I, I was thinking about this the other day um, when, when I realized that that since, like like my wife and I, and I'm, yeah, I got to, oh my God, I got to get off the line. So, so, so my wife and I, uh, before all of this COVID stuff, we had these, we had these things we did. I mean, we went, we went, we had sandwich. We went after work. We went and had a sandwich on Mondays. Uh, we had coffee. Uh, we, and we just sat down and talked about our day, our week, what was going on with us. Uh, we, we had regular date nights. COVID started. We didn't do none of that. And our lives got chaotic because we were not relating. We were not relating. And so, uh, I, I, the other day I was thinking about this and, and I was talking to God about that. And God was like, you stop, y'all have stopped relating. So what I did, what, what I did was, listen, uh, we got other pastors in our church. I, I was teaching all the lessons. I, I'm shutting down the, uh, I'm not teaching Bible study anymore. I'm going to let them teach it. I'm going to let them pour into me. Uh, my wife and I are getting back to our date nights, getting back to our Monday night, you know, chats and, and, and doing all of this stuff because you know, you can get so busy with life that you stop enjoying life. You know, things get, get to all over the place and you just stop enjoying life and the things that God has given you. I, I don't want, listen, we worked hard our whole lives to get to this place where we can enjoy our lives. We're not going to let all of everything that's going on in the world stop us from enjoying our lives. And I'm saying to you right now, stop. Just stop. Take inventory. Whatever is important to you, make that a priority in your life. Make that a priority in your life. And then order everything else. Prioritize. Order everything else around that. Prioritize what's most important and order everything else around that. Don't, don't lose what's important to you by trying to do everything else. That's all I got to say. I hope that this, I hope that this bless y'all the way that it just blessed me. I pray God that you just have the best. No, I, I pray God that this from this day going forward, that your life will just become the best that you've ever imagined that it could be from this day going forward. Praise God. Thank y'all for joining us. Thank you for your time. I love you. I really do love you. And I appreciate you. May the Lord bless you and your family real, real good. Y'all have a great Friday.